What's going on, Bay? You know, we've had these new announcements from Webflow for a couple weeks now. I've gotten my chance to use them and get my hands dirty with them. And some of them I really like, and some of them, you know, I have some opinions on. So I just wanna separate the gold from the glitter and let you know what I think. Let's hop into it. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, so first up, we've got the new Webflow logo and it looks sick. It's this nice geometric pattern and it just looks like a great refresh. I don't know why they needed a new logo. I don't know, I thought the old one was was fine, but I'm not a designer. So, you know, it looks great and it's getting a lot of praise from the community. Joseph says, can we all agree that the new Webflow logo is absolutely stunning? And pretty much everyone in here is agreeing and saying, yes, we love the new rebrand and it looks great. Um, so really good comments. Great job, Webflow designers on this one. Ilya asks for thoughts on the new logo. And again, everybody is saying that they love it. And Alex right here is one of my favorite accounts to follow on Twitter for design stuff. And the fact that he loves it means uh, I take his opinion and I also love it. So thanks, Alex, for letting me steal your opinion on the Webflow logo. Devin Fountain has a super keen eye for design stuff and also another Twitter account I like to follow. And he says it was not optically aligned. Uh, if these look different to... <laughs> If these two photos look different to you, then let me know. To me, you know, I have to I have to probably zoom in a lot here to see see what's going on or maybe even get my ruler out. As soon as he posted that though, I saw that Webflow says it is now. So they fixed it right away and super cool to see that happen. Now we also got a new UI update with this super cool loading indicator and just all these different, you know, darker, more higher contrast kind of outline buttons. And what else do we get? Like just really slick, but a much darker feel and for me, a little bit of trouble getting through the visual hierarchy between headings and options and things like that. And I don't think I was the only one on this. Matt Evans immediately posted that he has an unpopular take and that the new UI is a step backwards. He says the UI icons are much smaller and only work well on retina screens. Apparently he doesn't have a retina screen, um, but you know, we need to design for people that don't have retina screens as well. And that's a comment that you'll see in this Twitter thread below. And he's just showing us two pictures here of how it looks a lot blurrier on his monitor. And then we also have just a lot of takes saying, <laughs> hot take update your monitor, Matt. Great one, Derek. And just other people saying that they couldn't find stuff. Um, the styles, like the styles manager was over on the left and the undo button was gone. So uh, I don't know who's not using command Z, but uh, I'm not a hotkey guy, but I do use command Z. And just a lot of people saying like, you know, we miss the old UI and it's not that unpopular of a take that you know, it's technically correct. I don't know how designing for non-retin displays isn't a priority for a company like Webflow. And my eyes hurt trying to differentiate the icons on the left. So even on a studio display. So it doesn't matter what display you're on, people are not liking this UI. Now the true superhero is Sergey, who's a super talented designer at FinSuite. And he's got the original Webflow UI here. And he put some custom CSS through a Chrome extension called User CSS to make bolder lines, bigger icons, emphasized selected properties and larger text. So he's not complaining about the problem. Sergey is making the problem his And he also, if we go back and up here, he's gotten so into this side project, he's brought light mode to Webflow, which people have been wondering about for so long. So great job, Survey. It looks super cool. All right, next up is the spline integration. In my experience, it's super cool and gets getting 3D stuff into your Webflow project a lot easier. And that the spline tool is actually very intuitive and fun to use. Now, two things I did run into in my experience was making sure that your 0% keyframe scroll properties match your scene properties. So what was going on here is that like when the, the scene initially loads, the camera is in one spot. And if your like, what is it? Your initial interactions little checkbox is somewhere different then you're gonna, it's gonna load in its original camera scene and then it's gonna shift over to what your interaction had. And it just creates a jarring experience for the user. So be sure to watch out for that one and then also give values to any props that previously changed. So let's say you're changing the scale on the x-axis in the first keyframe, the second keyframe, you just change the y-axis, and then the third keyframe, you change the x-axis. You're gonna have the kind, the whole thing kind of disappear on you unless in that second keyframe, you also set a value for the x-axis. So another one to watch out for. So I was able to build this in less than half a day, just this really cool kind of stereo looking thing that's having a scroll interaction and has some really nice lighting effects going across it. So be sure to check that clonable out. All right, and localization was really slick as well. I thought they did a wonderful job of integrating everything with the UI and with the CMS and just, it looked really slick. Now, the main thing to know about localization is that there is a monthly cost associated with it. And I think it's gonna be more of an enterprise level sort of feature, uh, but just really nice to see how thorough of a job Webflow did with this one. You know, they're taking the extra time. It was supposed to release, I think six months ago to just, it looks like really make sure that this thing works well. 
So kudos to Webflow on that. I'm excited to work on it with some of my clients, but probably not on my own website. And next up we have variables, which is actually a huge release for Webflow. This is gonna change how we build in Webflow. Unfortunately, a lot of people are saying that this release felt a little bit rushed. I can't reorder styles that I have in here. There's no support for breakpoints or anything. Like hopefully all this extra space that we have here is going to be used for some more variables features, but that will only be in time to tell. So I'm just browsing through right here, Felixer Yuan's uh, really amazing clonable that he made. So you can actually use variables to do some pretty amazing stuff. And if we come in here, we'll see that, you know, something is like the variable names are really not meshing very well with the UI here. Um, in my experience, when I was animating from say a value of two RAM to four RAM for something like border radius, which you can animate now or grid gap, if that value matches what I had in the variable panel here, so say, I don't know, where do we have a two rem or a four rem? Well, I don't see a two rem, but we do have a zero rem. So if I started something from zero rem and then animate it to two rem, it, the animation wouldn't work when I set it to zero rem. And it was just really frustrating. So what I ended up doing was setting it to some sort of intermediate value, like three rem, and then animating from two to four rem. And that seemed to get it to work. Now that said, there are some sick things being built with these new variables and features. For one, Diego has built this scroll-based uh, SVG path animation. So really cool that we can do this natively in Webflow now. Pretty amazing. These two designs by Felixander Yuan got huge cheers by the crowd at Webflow Comp. The first one is color and curve. We can see that, okay, he's got some mouse interactions going on here. Things are following, but now let's start changing and see what's going on. As I'm looking at this, I'm seeing gradients being animated, which was not possible before. I'm seeing border radiuses being animated, which was not possible before. I'm seeing fonts change, which I knew was not possible before. So let's check out curviness here. Like border radius being animated in Webflow is crazy. However, you'll notice some little, like some, a little bit buggy behavior that I would not use this in a production site on because we'll see when we go from this kind of mid curviness to full curviness that is going out to zero border radius and then into its expected value. So some weird stuff going on here in variables. We have that we can expand these. So what he's playing with here is grid gap and that we can kind of animate that now. Uh, let's see, he's changing the font here, the stroke on the SVGs or the line, whatever he's got, and then even a really cool total UI animation. And this one was amazing too about favorite music as I'm just dragging my mouse over here. We see border radius changing, we see grid gap changing, we see colors changing, we see gradients changing. Just great job on this Felixander. All right, and now we're seeing Vlad show off custom properties, which is a way of adding CSS properties that aren't available natively in designer right there at the bottom of the styles panel. So this is an amazing step forward for developer uh, use in Webflow, that it's not just a no-code tool. This is a full-on developer tool where we have access to any CSS variable that we want. Really love this, not having to use embeds all the time, although it was pretty easy to do that in the first place. So not a huge feature boost or anything like that, but I do like seeing Webflow taking steps in the direction of more development because me, I like doing crazy development stuff. Now, components showed a lot of familiar workflows that we're already used to, that we've already seen, but haven't really completely changed the game yet. We can see that Webflow is going in the direction of using components more and more, but there are still things that limit them. Now, one is the props that were available to us. We didn't have video before, we didn't have rich text before, and now those are available. But I'm really excited about this addition of props where we can basically define an empty space in our component and say, hey, user, you can put anything you want in there. So say I have like a modal and I just want some text in there, then I can drop a text in there. Or say I want that same modal, same functionality, I've already coded all that up, but now I want a form in there. That's what slots will enable, and that's something that I'm very excited about. After the components demonstration, the CTO Allen walked through all the new APIs that Webflow has introduced. These actually got introduced before Webflow Conf, but they were just beating the drum on this one. Now, the new APIs are what are enabling the designer extension apps that are super cool and enabling a lot of new stuff in Webflow, like the FinSuite Tables app or like Unsplash or the DOM element. This is actually where the DOM element is coming from are these new APIs, if you were curious. Not sure if you were, but hey, now you know. Additionally, there's just a lot of new functionality being folded into these APIs, just with memberships, with e-commerce. There's even a new custom code API. So just a lot going on there for developers to start building on top of Webflow. 
Webflow is opening up their platform, which we really like to see. I think it's going to bring a lot more people into the Webflow ecosystem and also just bring a lot of productivity enhancements for everybody and open up doors to new business. So really exciting to see and what I'm going to build and what everybody else is going to build. It's an exciting time in Webflow because of these new API. Next, there was a short interlude featuring the Figma to Webflow app, which has gotten some more love and more attention and even more power, especially with variables and better syncing. Uh, you know, but I'm not really using that in my workflow beyond just getting styles into Webflow. And I think that's what it's still going to be doing, unfortunately. Now, one thing that makes me super excited about the future was this demo that Bryant gave with DevLink. Before with DevLink, what we could do was bring our Webflow components into React. Now what he's showing is bringing React back into Webflow. So essentially you would like do your design in Webflow, make something look really pretty, and then boom, port it out to DevLink. Or you don't even have to do that step in the first place. You could just build something in React, like say a booking tool or a custom map or anything like that, and then port it back into Webflow. So that is really exciting. The thing that was most jaw dropping for me was that he was actually running the JavaScript within designer. So I have never seen that before. And I actually had to corner him at the bar at the after party and make sure that's what was going on. And he said yes, but he also said it's not coming for a number of months. So I'm super hopeful for this release. Look, he's got an event locator there, Twitter timeline, date picker, all that he made in React and is bringing into Webflow. And then he drops it in there and it's loading and it's going to start executing the JavaScript right there in designer. And he's allowing location, like just it's which is calling some browser APIs, the geolocator API. And then once the location is loaded, now it's like servicing talks in San Francisco. This is absolutely crazy. This will change the whole components layout that we see in Webflow. So there you have it. That is my take on Webflow Conf 2023. Some really amazing new features announced and some really exciting days ahead for Webflow users. I think in general, the new features are pretty awesome but there are a few little things that we still need to make them totally game changing. So I'm gonna be waiting around and hoping and hoping and hoping, especially for that new DevLink feature that Brian announced. Anyways, if you liked the video, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That definitely helps me and I will leave you with a little video of mine that you might like to check out as well if you like this one. So see you in the next one, bye bye.